In this video, we will investigate the pre-overburden pressure of soil. The pre-overburden pressure, denoted POP, describes the magnitude of the maximum load ever placed on top of the soil. The parameter is directly correlated to how much load that can be applied before the behavior changes from overconsolidated to normally consolidated. If the pre-overburden pressure is equal to 100 kN per square meter, a load of approximately 10 tons per square meter can be applied before the stiff overconsolidated behavior is exchanged by a less stiff normally consolidated behavior. For normally consolidated soils, the pre-overburden pressure is equal to zero since the soil has not experienced a larger load than now. For overconsolidated soils, the pre-overburden pressure equals the maximum load ever experienced. The pre-overburden pressure is similar to the overconsolidation ratio, denoted OCR, since they both describe the stress history of soil. They are also both based on the pre-consolidation stress and the current vertical effective stress. The current vertical effective stress at a given depth is determined according to the geostatic stress formulas. If the water table is neglected, this only requires the soil's unit weight. The pre-consolidation stress is determined from edometer tests as the breakpoint between normally consolidated and overconsolidated behavior. Nearly all soils will show some kind of pre-consolidation stress, since the overburden pressure is included. Normally consolidated soils will show a pre-consolidation stress equal to the overburden pressure, while the pre-overburden pressure is zero. Overconsolidated soils will show a pre-consolidation stress equal to the overburden pressure plus the maximum external load. The pre-overburden pressure can be advantageous in multiple scenarios compared to the overconsolidation ratio. If multiple odometer tests are performed at different depths in a soil volume, they will show a different pre-consolidation stress. The pre-consolidation stress will equal the effective in situ stress plus the external load. If the pre-consolidation stress is compared for the two edometer curves, it will be offset by the difference in effective in situ stress. But what does this mean for the overconsolidation ratio? If the overconsolidation ratio is plotted as a function of depth, it decreases. This is because the maximum and current effective stress increases the same, whereas the fraction decreases. The overconsolidation ratio is therefore a local description of the soil stress history. The pre-overburden pressure, on the other hand, takes the increasing effective stress with depth into account why it will be constant throughout the whole soil volume. The pre-overburden pressure is therefore a more accurate way to describe the soil stress history and behavior as a whole. The pre-overburden pressure is very beneficial when modeling advanced soil behavior in finite element models. The effect of using a single value of the overconsolidation ratio compared to the pre-overburden pressure can be illustrated by an example. In both scenarios, the overconsolidation ratio or pre-overburden pressure has been obtained from an endometer test at an arbitrary depth. Let's take a look at the effective stress in a one-dimensional section for both soil volumes. The in situ effective stress is the same for both soil volumes. To the left, the effective stress is shown for a finite element model using the overconsolidation ratio to simulate the stress. Since the overconsolidation ratio is based on a fixed number, the effective pre-consolidation stress at ground level is zero. To the right, the effective stress is shown for a finite element model using the pre-overburden pressure to simulate the stress. In this scenario, the external load is directly specified why the effective pre-consolidation stress is simulated constant throughout the depth. This is more in line with what is expected. The pre-overburden pressure is therefore an important parameter since it defines the external load directly and yields a more accurate representation of the stress history in some instances. This concludes the video. The table presented shows the variables used and their general units. To support the channel, Please like and subscribe.